Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi Divi. My name is Matthew. Welcome and glad you are here. On this channel, we like to talk about simple crypto passive income strategies that are implemented on blockchains with utility, use cases, and that solve business problems. If you like that type of content, subscribe here or follow me right down here over at DeFi Divi on Twitter. As always, none of this is investment advice. I am not an investment advisor. Please do your own research outside this channel. We all have different financial circumstances and risk reward tolerance tolerances. And <clears throat> yeah, just don't buy anything because of anything I say or do. I'm just some guy here. But today we are going to talk about uh, maximizing your delegation rewards by means of due diligence that you can now do on the Flare dashboard. Uh, this thing is pretty cool. It was created by uh, at Banker DeFi here on Twitter uh, with a couple other developers in the Flare community. You might know him as Ash W on crypto Twitter. Ash is a part of uh, the uh, Mickey B. Fresh team, very talented team for all things related into deep, deep Flare network knowledge as well as... Uh, <clears throat> deep knowledge about the XRP ledger. So great stuff over there. Follow all those guys. And uh, so yeah, first I was really honored when this project was just getting underway, the Flare dashboard. Ash actually reached out to me to see if I wanted to uh, help with it. I'm a developer. I've been a developer for a long time, over 20 years. Uh, I've rolled out SaaS products and lots of Web2 things and Web3 as well now that's here and this is fun. And I just, yeah, I get geeked up on, on it. And, but I, I had a decline, unfortunately, cause I was just too busy, but maybe I'll be able to contribute somehow in the future. So I uh, appreciate that Ash for reaching out and, and this thing's coming along. It moves forward. I had no doubt Ash would be able to move this thing forward. And now it's out and we have this very cool dashboard where we can research specific data about each Flare time series Oracle provider, a TSO for short, whether it's Flare time series Oracle or a Songbird time series Oracle provider. Basically, if you don't know, uh, well, first, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with the Flare, Flare network or Flare networks, I should say, uh, it is a layer one blockchain that solves the problem of interoperability in a decentralized, trustless manner. Uh, think of uh, an Oracle that handles the entire problem in a completely decentralized way. So no centralized Oracle problems here. Now, what might that look like in practice? For one example I could think of, which I saw a really cool demo on, imagine you wanted to launch an NFT marketplace on Flare and you wanted people to, to pay and be able to buy NFTs in XRP or Dogecoin or Litecoin or Bitcoin or Algorand or a number of others, eventually any blockchain. Well, you can be able to do that using building on Flare, using the state connector and pulling in price data from what's called Flare time series oracles. Flare time series oracles, so oracles pull decentralized price data or they pull price data in a decentralized manner from other blockchains and from Web2 data sources and it's trustlessly verified and those those price feeds can go into dApps. And us delegators, we can delegate our vote power to Flare Time Series Oracles, and we can earn rewards for that in uh, Songbird tokens and in Flare tokens. And pre before this Flare dashboard ever existed, the only real research we could do was on a really cool site called flaremetrics.io, and we could see the vote power and some some bits of information, but we really didn't get a deep dive or a deep look into who's behind the Flare Time Series Oracle in question and you know, what are they doing with their delegation rewards and what are they doing for the community? Are they, are they here to enhance the community or, you know, are they just here to make a quick buck and split? Uh, are they here to start a profitable business that they can live off of? There's all kinds of reasons and the reasons they're here might impact whether or not you would delegate to someone. A lot of us are probably just looking for the best return. I don't see, I could see that being a comment. I know I, I, that's influenced me. I thought, well, I think I'm probably making more here than I was here. So I'm going to delegate here, but you know, I also didn't have enough data to look at, okay, well, this might not be uh, the best TSO for the community. 
And in the long run, I might end up actually making less because if I want to maximize rewards and in the context of simple crypto passive income, that's sustainable, that keeps coming in and it helps the community grow, which is what's going to keep it sustainable and coming in, then I might want to pick someone else. And now I can see that data on the Flare dashboard. So first, Ash posted a Medium article uh, which I think is worth a quick glance over before you go to the, the actual dashboard website itself. So we'll talk about that so we can get an idea of the different types of metrics that are available on this thing. And then we'll talk about some of the other features like ways, if you are a developer, how you can pull this data into your own application. So I thought that was really cool. I can show you a couple of ways to do that. And I'll even give you a tip on how you can tell if like someone is really storing your data locally or if you're 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 being fooled by them and they're not storing your data locally because there are a lot of browser extensions out there and they'll say stuff like yeah we store your data locally so you, on your own browser so i'll show you a way you can kind of check that really quickly as well but anyway let's get into it so this medium article uh flare dashboard how to use the data and i quote the Flare dashboard webpage has been designed to provide delegators, that's us, with updated and relevant information regarding time series Oracle data providers that submit prices to the Flare and Songbird networks. Accessing provider information prior to Flare dashboard was an arduous task as the information was either scarce or not publicly available. This made it incredibly difficult for delegators to perform due diligence on the provider teams they wish to support in both networks. As a result, delegators have largely relied on the reward rate metric in their vote power delegations. Uh, the purpose of this documentation is to outline the data displayed on the Flare dashboard, where and how it is sourced, the quality of the data, and how various stakeholders in the Flare and Songbird ecosystem can use the data effectively. And then it talks about some reasons we might delegate or choose certain providers. Uh, and I quote, community token holders participate in the TSO by wrapping their Flare or Songbird, which you know probably, yeah, unless you're new to Flare Networks, and delegating up to two providers of their choice. There are several reasons why a delegator may contribute their vote power to a particular TSO data provider. One, to earn a share of the network's inflation each epic. So yeah, we want to delegate to someone so we can get those rewards. We want to increase our bags. Down the road, this might look like um, simple crypto passive income that we get every couple days with the Flare Networks, that we get every uh, Saturday or Sunday with Songbird. We might take that. We might put it back on a market, convert it into the fiat currency of the country we live in and pay all our bills with it. Who knows? Uh, that's where a lot of us are <clears throat> thinking that this could grow to. Flare Networks is new, of course. If you don't know that, maybe not, of course, maybe you don't know that Flare Networks is new. It's solving big problems. So I believe in the project, but it is new. So there's risk there. You know, any cryptocurrency can go to zero. No question. So keep that in mind. But this is real simple crypto passive income that we're believing will we'll grow into something substantial in the future. And right now, with prices being so low, like I think Songbird token is coming up again, uh, almost back at a penny. I, p I bought a little more at 0.7 cents. I'll probably buy a little more soon. And then Flare is, it went back down. It was up over 4 cents last week. So this looks like a, an opportunity I might take as well here. I've been buying some other stuff right now, uh, actually in stocks, but I will. Yeah, crypto is my favorite. Cryptocurrency is so fun for me, especially with new networks that solve big problems. Anything that has utility solving business problems. If you watch this channel, you know I talk about those blockchains. And Flare is one I talk about a lot. But let's get back to this. So, yeah, obviously we would delegate to a signal provider to earn rewards. Uh, we might delegate to a certain provider um, to support a provider with a strong public presence and transparency to the community, to support a provider that submits prices using algorithms that deploy safeguards, for example, an algorithm that sources USD-only markets for asset prices when USDT, USDC, and other stable coins become depegged, which we've seen that happen recently. We saw... Uh, USDC lose its peg for a minute there. 
down, down to the low 90 cents. Uh, everyone's waiting for something to happen with Tether, but so far, <laughs> so good. Uh, we might delegate to support a provider whose data is sourced and submitted through reliable, secure infrastructure. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. I think quite a few are using AWS cloud services for that. I know when I was researching uh, becoming a data provider, I was looking into AWS. Um, what else? To support a provider, teams that uses their revenue generated to build tools, resources, and dApps for the community to use. Yeah, this is huge right here because this ultimately, this second one, I'll repeat it. To support a provider team that uses their revenue generated from TSO to build tools, resources, and decentralized applications for the community to use. Basically, what he said there, uh, you know, we might want to support, we might feel real, might really benefit us in the long run, just from an investor standpoint, if we are delegating to supporters who are taking their rewards, because we're helping them earn rewards with our, by delegating our vote power to them, and they're taking those rewards, and they are using that, those rewards to reinvest and build other things. And they might have to pay some bills with those rewards. So it's kind of a tricky thing, you know, the uh, ultimately... I know when I was thinking about becoming a, 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 a signal provider, I thought, well, this could be great because it's going to be a source of passive income and I could use those rewards and, and, and do exactly that, build more tools and resources for the community. But I learned, uh, before this dashboard came out, I kind of did some research and thought this, this is not going to be passive income. This is going to be active income. Not only that, it's going to probably be like a business where I'm running at a loss for a while before I'm running at a gain. And that's great. I love those types of risk reward scenarios. I've done it before as an entrepreneur and they're fun. I just, I just didn't uh, move forward with this at the time, but I, I'm glad my pricing estimates were right because there are on this flare dashboard, which we'll get into a second. You can see the infrastructure costs that some people are posting on here and they're well right in the range I thought and some are in some is even some of these monthly costs are even more expensive so it's a substantial investment it's not passive income to be a signal provider but if you're a developer nerd like me and you you're good with infrastructure as well cloud infrastructure then you have a good shot especially if you can get a grant or some sort of, you know, if you look at it through that lens, you want to get a grant or something and, and, and you're good at marketing. You're going to have to be good at marketing as well. You're going to have to add value to the Flare community so they know who you are and so they will feel good about delegating to you. It's not an easy thing, but it's a very, it could be a very rewarding thing. So it's still in the back of my head. Right now I'm building some other fun things, but... I get sidetracked, and I'm not even drinking caffeine right now. I'm drinking water. Uh, so back to this. The Flare dashboard contains a free-to-use public web page that displays data provided by T, uh, data providers, TSO data providers, who are currently submitting prices on the Flare and Songbird networks. The website obtains its data from our public GitHub database, where new and existing data providers are encouraged to list and update information on their TSO operations respectfully. So if you're a data provider, you go to this GitHub repo, you, it looks like you just upload a JSON file which has your information, and then this JSON data is pulled into this dashboard. And likewise, if you're a developer, you can use this JSON data for your own application. So I think that is really cool. Great approach uh, taken there by Ash and the other contributors. I'd like to give you guys credit. I, I, I always forget who the other person is. I think they're more of a dev and less in the public eye, which I get. It's funny, on other ventures, I did not play the role of marketer at all, and I was just the dev behind the scenes, and I like it. It's fun because that nerds me out. But, yeah, you wouldn't even know I existed from the public standpoint. Who's Matthew? Oh, he's the guy who built that. Uh, anyways, back to it. So you get the idea. What I thought was really important is the description of the columns here. There is a um, – it talks a little bit about – the columns in what you get in each column. So here it is right here. Let's hit this really quickly. Uh, the Flare dashboard is organized in a tabular data structure, tabulated data structure, and so you have the columns here. And so let's see, we have the team information. That's self-explanatory. It's going to be uh, information about the data provider teams, including members and skill sets, company structure, and country of operation. It'll have the operation history, 
information, uh, basically when the provider began submitting prices. Build plans is important, so this section lists any details uh, about any products, tools, or resources that the provider might be building or has built. And then this next column is your infrastructure setup and costs, and it contains information on what this provider is paying for uh, infrastructure, basically cloud architecture, or if they're hosting their own servers, their own hardware servers, you know, what that would cost. Data safeguards, you know, backups and how to handle things like a, a, a DPEG. Uh, reward sales. This is interesting. This uh, section contains information on the data provider's sales of rewards from the services they provide to the network, as well as how the business thinks through its sales, right? So, for example, if you're a data provider and are you taking all your rewards uh, for yourself and just dumping them? Uh, or are you maybe just paying some of your costs and then reinvesting those rewards back into the network somehow? They could be paying for your own time to have the free time to build stuff. So that one's kind of tricky. Uh, and then it also has the reward holdings address. And I quote, this section displays the Flare and Songbird account address to which provider business to which the provider business receives its rewards. So you can see where this FTSO is receiving its rewards and get a look at that. So let's look at this. Let's look at the dashboard itself now that you know everything. So here is the uh, site and the list of things, list of items, if you will. And a couple of these I'm delegating to right now. I'm delegating to S-Toads. And so if I wanted to it's funny, I, I was delegating to S-Toads before I even read this because I've been delegating to them for about maybe three or four weeks now and letting it ride. Uh, and, and now I can even get more information. So S-Toads team information, you can go here and see lead dev, one branded team with a number of other engineers working on game, dApps, and verse. FTSO is dedicated to FTSO dev is a lifelong developer. Gotcha. I got you. They have a they have a dev sounds like dedicated just to the FTSO. Yeah, like I said, that's not going to be a passive income job. You got a maintenance optimization. There'll be moments when you can let it ride, but not forever. Uh, and then here is when they started end of March 22, beginning of April 22, never went down, had availability issues, which means it wasn't 100 percent. Yeah, and that happens. And I like that they're transparent about it. I mean, even on AWS, the AWS can go down. It does. That's why they give you all these alerts and they, su they suggest you run in multiple availability zones. So in case the West Coast AWS goes down, you can still run on the East Coast AWS. And I'm sure the same applies for whatever country you're in. And then AWS makes a lot more money from you. And then that really does up your infrastructure costs as well. Uh, build plans, DAP black box games. Yeah, so if you've seen s -toads, you know they are uh, building some really, really cool stuff. I mean, that game looks amazing. Uh, and look at here. They're sharing their infrastructure costs. Yes, AWS, like many. Uh, and they're paying about uh, between 15,000, 1,500, excuse me. They're paying between 1,500 and 2,000 per month. Uh, last time I checked, and that's the primary and worker nodes. Data safeguards, yes, although there's not much detail into the data safeguards. Reward sales, uh, and let's see what they say about that. As discussed, my partner and myself are both whales. <laughs> I like that. I have to check them on the whale rankings. I'm kidding. I don't. I, I probably could actually no because they don't share their <laughs> their addresses. It's all anonymous. But if if you watch this channel you know I do a whale rankings list for both Songbird and Flare in fact Songbird will be coming out April 15th I'll run that one next week but as discussed my partner and myself are both whales of Flare and Songbird we hold a lot what we hold versus what we reinvest back into building on the network is our concern and I can appreciate that I would kind of feel the same way um we reinvest rewards back into our ecosystem to build Flare to build on Flare, the XRP Ledger, and Songbird, and to cover hosting costs. Reality is our product suites will result in more value to the network as opposed to holding on to the assets. There is this notion that if you sell rewards, you are a bad actor or, or a steward. Incorrect. And I agree, that is incorrect. If these guys, I would, I would probably, this is a total presumption, speculation, I would speculate that but looking at the quality of what S Toads is building, they're doing this full time. And so maybe they're literally paying themselves with their rewards. So they're probably selling 
and then they're they're working full that enables them to work full time on the game they're building which looks epic by the way as i already said because you're not going to roll out a game like that being part time so you're either got a grant or you're paying yourself with your rewards or you've just maybe you got into the crypto space earlier and you are you know you you're just you you've sold off a long time ago and you've reinvested into some simple stuff you know you a lot of we're in, you know, we're 14 years into the cryptocurrency space now. Maybe they bought Bitcoin a while ago. But otherwise, if it's not something like that, then you'd have to have a day job somehow, right? And you wouldn't have time to build really quality stuff. So I get it. It's their concern. And it wouldn't bother me at all. It, it's something to think about in terms of the price. And this, this at these early days, this may keep the price down for a little bit. And what happens, but these dApps get built and they will result in, in buy pressure. And ideally that will raise transaction fees, which will go back into the network as well. And so inflation goes down, transaction fees goes up, go up, and that benefits everybody. So very cool. And they didn't leave their rewards holding address, which no biggie to me. Uh, but... Yeah, so I'm still I'm still with them. I like to change it up. I'm not saying I'm going to stay there forever. I was here. I was before on FTSO AU and on Flare Oracle. I thought what Flare Oracle Oracle wrote was pretty cool because they gave some big reveals. So the team you have Miko, developer, Finland, Mark, product designer, and uh, so it's basically these two: Miko, the developer, and uh, Mark is the product designer manager, and they're based out of the Netherlands. It looks like. And then their operation history goes back to October 2021, uh, Epic Four of Songbird, and they run flare nodes and attestation providers and attestation providers from August 2022, and their build plans, uh, delegation wrapping and claiming tools, delegation dashboard built on SVG coming to Flare, responsive metrics dashboard, uh, Fort NFT gallery built on Songbird coming to Flare. Uh, I'm telling you, this is why I did a video about Songbird is going to be higher than Flare because a lot of these projects, they start on Songbird, they move to Flare, and they don't get rid of Songbird. It's a real token, real monetary value with much smaller supply, which is why I'm probably going to buy some more Songbird this week. Anyways, bonus reward token, Pixel Chain Olympics blockchain NFT play to earn game coming to Songbird. Wow, that's cool. Play to earn gaming. That's great. I love it. So Flare Oracle is doing some cool stuff. I love it. They give, they uh, talk about their infrastructure costs. They're running their own infrastructure. They run four nodes total. That's cool. So they're not using AWS. They, they have their own servers, it looks like. Uh, two for Songbird and two for Flare. And plus or minus $1,200 per month. Virtual machines for the price provider and the infrastructure for our FTSO data provider indexers. Oh, and $1,100. Oh, plus eleven hundred per month there. So okay, so they're playing. They're paying. They're they're over two grand a month. It looks like as well. It's not it's not cheap, folks, for a single you know dev. Um, but if you're like thinking of it like a business, then two thousand dollars a month is pretty cheap. I know we paid. Well, it was funny. The last business I ran, I think we, our hosting costs were <laughs> still under like four or five hundred bucks. But we were doing like real revenue. It was supporting three of us. It was amazing. Uh, but it was a, uh, expensive subscription SaaS product and it didn't need, uh, to handle a lot of traffic. Something like this is going to have to handle, handle some, uh, bandwidth basically, but, uh, data safeguards. Yes. Our provider tracks USD and also looks at USD prices for our fallback systems. And then our costs are less than, this is pretty cool. So they look profitable. Fantastic. Nicely done, Flare Oracle. See what happens when you run part of your own infrastructure. Our costs are less than 25% of our monthly rewards, and another 25% of all our rewards go to the S-Fort and Fort Reserve. And the remainder is paid to the team. Each team member sold plus or minus 25 to 75% of their share so far. On Flare, that number stands at 0% at the moment. So... They're openly saying we're profitable. Our profit margins are above, it looks like above 50% at least, more than more than a 75% profit margin. Fantastic. Because some of these other signal providers are still running at a loss. And they're going, and these rewards are going to the team and their team is selling some. And I have no problem with that because that supports the team. The team can continue to build these cool things. 
play to earn game is no joke. Uh, single is not, that's not going to be built by one developer who, who knows how to do, you know, react. It's, that's real. That's some real effort there. And so you have to be able to support yourself and do it full time. A couple guys at least. And then they do leave their rewards addresses. So if you want to click that, it'll take you to the block explorer where you can take a look. And yeah, I have this stuff going into my, um, rich list whale rankings application as well so fun stuff anyway very cool so i love this i'll let you look at this oh i promised i was going to give you a uh a tip on how to know if like someone says you know here use my browser extension all the data including your crypto wallet address is only stored locally so uh, i looked into the uh, ways to get access to this data and you could just go right to the git repo uh, but before I saw that, I was just looking for maybe like an API on the website, and I didn't see one. So I, what I did was I, I, I clicked, I right-clicked on the page, and I hit Inspect through the menu. So you just hit Inspect. And then once you're here, this is known as the Developer Console in Chrome. I'm on Brave, actually. And then you go to the Network tab. And then once you're in the Network tab, just hit the website again. Boom. <laughs> And you'll see once you hit the website, this is all the network requests that the website is making under the hood from your browser. And this would apply if you're using a browser extension as well. So if you open up something like Hashpack or, uh, sorry, I know this is a flare video, but Hashpack's just sitting there front and center or MetaMask, you, you will see all the network requests and then you can click on it and you'll see like, you can go to preview and you can see all the data from this specific request, you know, response. But the point is you can see that this DAP, when you refresh it, makes a bunch of requests to remote locations and it might pass some data, basic data about your computer, but nothing, nothing big. But now let's say you open a browser extension and someone's telling you that if you use this tool, all the data is stored locally and you go to this network tab and you refresh and open it and open the browser extension and do the same type of inspect that you did here. If you see requests going out to a third party that include your wallet address in the headers or what's known as the payload, then you know that that data is probably not just being stored locally on your browser. It's also being sent somewhere. So you would not see any requests here on the network tab, especially under this section right here called fetch XHR, which is basically an Ajax request. So, so you should see zero Ajax requests, nothing here would, that would include, especially your wallet address. If an app is telling you, okay, yeah, you are only storing your data locally. So just a little, little tip. I hope that helps probably too much information. Uh, it could be the caffeine, but I'm going to wrap this one up, everybody. I hope this video finds you well and that you're having an amazing day, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.